This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a rather unusual video. Today we're actually going to be looking at, finally, this Steam Deck. I've had this thing for, I don't know, a couple of months now, but um, I wanted to show off how racing games are for the Steam Deck. I found both things very cool about it and some things that I'm a little bit eh, not quite sure about yet. So first and foremost, we got to do the most recent game to have been released that is making waves in the racing community is Need for Speed Unbound. Let me see if I can get this booted up here for you guys. And welcome to the world of Need for Speed Unbound. We are with my Exige in the story mode. I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the camera quality. This is a an old camcorder that Canon had made. So yeah, the picture quality isn't great and it really doesn't make the Steam Deck look all that great. But I, I want to tell you that the image is very sharp. You know, having all this real estate here of a screen is actually really nice. Uh, when you first pick it up versus like having like a Nintendo Switch, the additional real estate and the additional weight of it really makes it scream. I am not a Switch and I am not an upgrade of a Switch. I am a completely new system with different technology. Um, so as you can tell, I am on, um, I will pull up our settings here. Graphic wise, I am on the lowest possible. It's just custom, but I made sure that I turned everything off or on low. Um, I am not going to benchmark this and show you what, you know, different graphics qualities with different games look like. This is going to be just kind of an overview of my personal experience with certain games and their graphic qualities. So Need for Speed Unbound on low. I'm getting a solid 60 frames. Sometimes you'll get some stutters and whatnot. When you're in races, when you've got cops and whatnot, it really tanks. And of course, I'm not actually in the city either. And I bet that has something to do with it as well. So let me just set up a waypoint and let me uh, time, travel, time travel forward a little bit to the city to show you guys what it's all about. All right, and we're in the city. So kind of like I've said in my Unbound review video, is that of course the game is very pretty, but it is of course 2022. And if you can't make a pretty video game, I mean, what the hell are you doing in the video game industry? So of course it looks great. Um, as far as optimization goes, on PC, Unbound is great. On consoles, so I've heard it's great. Uh, as far as the Steam Deck goes, I mean, I'm still holding 60 frames. Again, this is not realistic, though. Uh, there have been a lot of times. We're very uh, comfortable with this game running in 30 frames in races. So let me just pull up the race here to kind of show you what I'm all about. So surprisingly, uh, at the very beginning of this race here, we're holding about 46 frames a second. So uh, you'll definitely be able to tell the difference between like 60 and 40 per se. And then we start getting into like, you know, a lot of you know cars coming around, a lot of carnage going around. We're starting to dip into the high 30s, low 40s. Uh, you start adding cops into the mix pretty quickly here. And that too is going to continue to drop. So of course, this game is not something... Yeah, here we go, down to the 32. So this game is definitely not one that will hold a solid 60 frames a second. I'm sorry to say that, uh, but the game is also very uh, resource intensive on the graphics card. Uh, even the CPU, we're holding about 81, 82% usage. A uh, graphics card was between 90 and like 97. Uh, we started hitting uh, the mid to low 30s. I saw for a moment that we're down to 25 frames a second. So uh, that being said though, um, if you have low graphic settings on in this game, you're probably going to be okay. But when I started screwing around and like trying to go into medium to high graphics, like the game would just kind of crash. So just be aware that if you want to play this at all, uh, low settings will be fine. It is definitely playable. Uh, the Steam Deck has opened my eyes into being okay with lower frame rates. I'm an individual that likes the really high frame rates and all, all that kind of fun stuff. 
but uh, games are still playable at 30 frames. Games are still playable at 40 frames. Games are not really that playable at like 20 frames. So there are going to be some games that go really, 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 really low. And at that point, they you shouldn't really be playing them at that point. So by picking up a Steam Deck, I've become... I'm not going to say well-versed, but I've opened my world into Linux gaming as a whole, or just more or less dealing with Linux as an operating system as a whole. Well, one thing about Linux is that Windows doesn't like Linux in a lot of different cases, whether it be discovery, like in the like file manager or, or file explorer, call it, where you're just trying to find things. Uh, and going as far as uh, what they call Proton files, which is basically files that are able to make Windows-related ad applications compatible with Linux. So as an example, we're going to boot up Need for Speed Unbound and the EA launcher or certain games that use third-party launchers to launch games is notorious in the Steam Deck community. As you can tell, it just takes forever for the game to load and there have been many times where it just sticks there for like tens of minutes and you're like well what the hell well one thing that you can do is if you go to home and you click on your game and you click on the cog and you go to the developer you can delete the ca compatibility files and it'll reinstall them and then you'll reopen the game it'll reinstall them and then the game should load fine so the thing that I found with the Steam Deck is if you are to purchase the Steam Deck, you need to be very good at being okay with Googling a lot of things because I don't know a lot. And this just helped emphasize the fact that I don't know anything. So be comfortable with asking questions. Be careful. Well, be comfortable with uh, taking some time to tinker. If you want something to work right out of the box and it works perfectly every time, there are some games that do that well. Um, but you will run into some games that don't do that very well in the Steam Deck with, you know, EA games, for instance, or games by Ubisoft or games by Blizzard. All of those, sometimes you actually have to go as far as installing the launcher into the Steam Deck and going in that way. Not a fun time, but when you get it, it's just, oh, it's so cool when you can launch, call it StarCraft 2 from the Battle.net launcher into the game, well, into the Steam Deck. It's just so cool when you finally pull it off. So enough of Unbound kind of made my point there, but let us bring up another game here. Let us bring up uh, something a little bit more sim racy. Let us look at Aceta Quartz. Compizione. Compizione. Let's try that again. <laughs> Alright, so this is a set of Corsa Compizione here. We're in a Lamborghini GT, well, Lamborghini Huracan GT3 car, immediately spinning out, running into the wall, and crashing out. Alright, take two. We're in a set of Corsa Compizione in a Lamborghini Huracan GT3 car on the Nürburgring uh, circuit, or Grand Prix per se. Um,. So, again, this game is definitely playable. Uh, once again, it's don't expect high frame rates. I mean, this is a fairly intensive game. I went to my settings and I made sure to go on, put low in the graphical settings pretty much everywhere. And we are managing 40s in the frame. So we're doing 45, 49. I mean, like, not too bad. Honestly, really not too bad. Um, of course, it's very hard to commentate listen to your engineer who won't shut up about the person next to me and drive at the same time but i digress uh again we are still in the 40s for frame rates even though we had some pretty intense battling there with somebody else uh about 90 percent of gpu usage and about 74 for cpu uh losing traction just completely cut through that area don't mind that don't mind that please don't mind anything that's going on the screen right now we're just having a ball of a time as we understeer into the gravel trap. Uh, goodbye, Ferrari. Goodbye, hopes and dreams. And goodbye, uh, racing integrity. So we're just going to call that done. We don't need to go back to that. For those wanting another simulation racing game that doesn't involve crashing GT3 cars on the Nürburgring, but rather crashing F1 cars in Canada with very wet racing tires and very wet environments and all the rest of that, 
Um, we've got Formula One 2022, or rather F1 22. And so I am actually rather surprised about this is when I was playing this game earlier, I think I was on like lower medium settings, something like that. I honestly can't remember. Uh, but with this, I actually changed it to very low settings and somehow, some way we have been maintaining an incredible stable 60 frames a second. As you can tell, my driving is still absolutely horrible. I'm not trying to focus much on the racing as much as I am commentating about the performance of the handheld device. So again, I do apologize for the absolute appalling nature of driving that you're witnessing on your screen. So if you can just put that aside for a moment and focus on the performance of the device, I think you'll be quite rather astounded as much as I am here when it comes to uh, the Steam Deck's capability. So uh, to kind of wrap this up here, uh, GPU usage is only at 70%. CPU is around 56 or thereabouts. And we're actually going over 60 frames a second here. Uh, just for a moment there, you probably saw it, you know, twitch up a couple times. Yep, go up to 61 there. So if you're playing F1 22 on very low settings on the Steam Deck, like, this thing can do it in its sleep. Like, it's just like, I can do this all day. Like, come on, like, give me something harder to work with. Um, so yeah, I just, again, let's, let's just kind of forget about what just happened there. We don't need to talk about that. So simulation racing games, you absolutely can use them or play them and still have a really good time here on the Steam Deck. Should you though? Eh maybe you could still have fun with them, but of course it's not going to be the same as like getting your whole sim rig set up and, you know, doing hot laps and time trials and whatnot. If, if you're looking for just a nice casual, casual good time. Yeah. Like F one 22, the set of Corsa Composione, perfectly fine. Um, here's the really cool thing that I didn't consider much about the steam deck until I bought it. And that is, so yeah, I've got all your games that you installed from Steam. Yeah, that's all fun, dandy. Uh, let's go over a couple here. Non-Steam games. Oh, you might say? Well, part of the Steam Deck is, I can actually show you. If you go to power and you go to switch to desktop, something magical happens. It's a little bit corny, but I digress. Um, the cool thing with the Steam Deck is it's running Linux in the background. Technically speaking, Steam OS, which is a version of Linux, but again, I digress. Um, so you've got that basically Steam overlay, big picture overlay running in the forefront. But if you want to get it more into the nitty gritty, you can actually go into the background here and actually play around with some things here. And this is running a full version of Steam OS, or again, Linux where you can just, hey, I'm gonna to go to the internet. Pull up my web page. that's out of date, let's not look at that. Uh, you've got Discord installed, you've got, again, the like standard version of the Steam installed. So, you know, this will look exactly like your guys' normal Steam libraries and whatnot when you log into your desktop computers and whatnot. But by doing so, uh, they've got a nice little kind of Linux store we can go to applications, you can go to games, you can go to emulators. It'll take a little bit for it to load, but you can actually feasibly install all sorts of different emulators to run like old retro games and you can add these emulators into Steam as non-Steam games and be able to run all sorts of games. So let's try that out. So we're back in the front end of Steam and we're going to go to Dolphin. So the Dolphin emulator is known for being a GameCube and Wii emulator. And as you can tell, you've got some of your GameCube games here, like Burnout and Burnout 2, uh, Automodelistia, Automolista, Model, Modelista. 
uh you know hot wheels games mario kart and double dash um sonic riders so like the gamecube and the wii have many games in my mind that are slept on as far as like good racing games go i think need for speed yeah need for speed nitro and uh the hot pursuit wii version is in there uh but the game that i want to draw you guys' attention towards is this one so you guys are sitting here going, Matt, what in the hell is Drift Mania? Well, Drift Mania so happens to be a WiiWare game developed by Konami, of course, for the Wii, that happens to be possibly my favorite top-down racing game to ever exist. I'm starting to circuit superstars. We'll talk about this in a moment. But in my mind, Drift Mania has some of the most fun, intuitive, like best uh, arcadey handling period. So let's pull up medium. Let's go to a uh, city and let's go -da 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 -da, grab last car and let's start. So immediately it's got a graphical error so like you've you've got that little um like shadow part way through the map or whatever that's fine but like apart from that the game works perfectly fine it is a solid 60 frames a second and it is a absolute blast to play um so if you guys have the dolphin if you guys are able to get emulators up and running I highly recommend trying to get a copy or your hands on a uh, Drift Mania as legally as you as legal, sorry, legally as you can. Um, but I know it's going to be difficult these days because how do you get WiiWare games off of Wii? I don't know. So that being said, I mean, this game literally only has like three buttons. Well, rather four is left and right joystick, A for accelerator and B for brakes and take a look at all this carnage happening already like the music is great you know the handling of the cars is so intuitive like it's just it's it's stupid fun it's exactly what you would want from an arcade racer just a lot of fun just cozy kind of casual fun and it's just ah the steam deck is meant for this kind of stuff it really is so running a dolphin emulator at a solid 60 frames a second playing your favorite childhood games i mean this is so so cool about the steam deck that i was not expecting to have so much fun with i was not expecting to run emulators at all all right so i'm going to stop it here i could literally play this game all night so we've got other uh games to review here so not falling so far away from the dolphin emulator let's take a look at something else here let's take a look at PCSX2. You guys see it? It's the PlayStation 2 emulator. And you can probably tell where this is going. Well, it's Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. So let's let's just do this real quick. So uh, immediately the uh, emulator states up here that it's running in 60 frames a second. Uh, I'm not sure if the PlayStation 2 ever hit 60 frames a second, so uh, divide that by two and we're probably close to accurate. Unless if I take the time to actually count out the frames in this video, which, sorry guys, I don't think I'm going to do. Regardless, uh, with each emulator, you might have to do a little bit of playing around with. You might have to take some time to go into the emulators to make sure that you uh, adjust your key bindings to make sure that all the buttons are going to be uh, mapped correctly. But uh, if you do so, you'll get a really cool experience. Again, like I said, you'll be able to play your favorite video games of your childhood. So I'm just, again, just enjoying myself playing some Hot Pursuit 2. I'm just, oh, such a fun game. The nice thing about the Steam Deck, in my mind, is it kind of opens up a conversation about just kind of like playing old video games that you haven't touched in years um it opens up the conversation of of game preservation where it's you you're not thinking all much a whole lot about you know video games of now being preserved in the future but like in you know 10 20 years you might come back and say 
man, Formula One 22 was probably the best Formula One racing game that I ever played because ever since then, ever since EA took over, it was just a complete mess. Um, no, that's probably not going to be the case. But for example, um, so the Steam Deck being Linux based and all the rest of that and being able to incorporate emulators into Steam and the rest of that, it's just, I love it so much. I, it's, it was something I was not expecting to divulge so much of my time into, but the Steam Deck is basically a giant emulation machine, and I, it's just, it's so cool. Ah. And the really cool thing about emulators is this, is that because they're running very old hardware, uh, depending on how well the emulators are optimized, um, well, it says here that it's running at about 25, 24% of the CPU, and it's using about 12, 13, 14% of the GPU. So, like, not only is playing your favorite games from who knows how long ago a viable option in 2022, but moreover, the Steam Deck, it could quite possibly do it asleep like I, I was joking about it earlier with drift mania or like with uh f122 no like it's using so much power you could barely tell if the thing was even on so it's just, which begs the question of you know how much battery are you actually using not a lot with emulators but that's one downside with uh the steam deck is that people have said openly that the battery life isn't great so if you do get a steam deck definitely get a power bank or in my case i'm just always next to an outlet so i just always have it plugged in it's never really much of a problem so so kind of like drift mania i could play this game absolutely all day every day for the next 200 years and never get tired of it so let us move on to i'll do just one last emulator to to show you guys something else that i've been hinting towards for a long time but this one actually is uh installed through steam itself and it's called retro arch so you can actually download this one right off the steam store and it works right out of the box and works great but we get into playstation one oh boy what a console for racing games. Um, I have actually put a surprisingly large amount of time into Gran Turismo 2 doing like uh, like the various uh, trophies, kind of like what I've been doing with the Gran Turismo 7 is trying to get you know gold medals as much as I can. But I'm going to go into the big one. For those who know it, you know it. It's the classic, classic Need for Speed. Need for Speed 3 hot pursuit this is what started it all for me this was the game that opened me up into exotic supercars racing away from cops and and the start of my lifelong obsession with the need for speed franchise uh so i'm just going to be real quick on this we're going to do hot pursuit we're going to do expert we'll do that we got to do hometown um and then we got to do the this guy this Lamborghini Diablo SV with, you know, the yellow color, and it's got that iconic SV kind of cursive kind of swoop down the side of the car. I love the fact that you can play it in heat. I can't remember if it's in Unbound. I believe it's in Unbound as well, but you can play like one of the first Need for Speed cars. It's so cool. I love that about it. And here we go. It's hometown. Uh, I forgot to fill out the grid here, so we're just up against, um, you know, a single Corvette here, which honestly is still fine on its own. We got a little bit of traffic. We got some cops coming on up in a little bit. Um, of course, with Retro Arc, there actually is a surprisingly large amount of customization. Um, you can actually have it like full widescreen, not in your standard aspect ratio. Um, but yeah, it's just, it just runs better in my opinion when it's in the, the standard aspect ratio. Uh, the cops in this game are so aggressive and the, uh, handling of the game is so wild and there's just so much clipping involved. 
and these guys are they are literally out for blood they are screaming into their megaphones they're ramming you off the road um and it's surprisingly difficult and this is just on the opening track we're not even getting into like summit where it's, you've got these like crazy turns around you know these narrow hairpins around the, the you know climbing up and down mountains and whatnot and you know being in the winter where there's just sudden patches of ice and it's just man but as you can tell i'm i'm enjoying myself way too much here so i'll i'll try to stop blabbing uh again uh, more on an objective side versus the subjective side uh objectively speaking uh we are running a solid 60 frames a second it's not actually 60 frames it's, it's like 30 or something um but that's more or less a limitation of the playstation one uh we are running about 10 percent of the cpu and we went as low as seven percent of the gpu we've been averaging you know somewhere in the teens so you know 12 to 15 to 16 somewhere in there um and we have an entire police force oh my god i didn't realize that we got a diablo cop on us already sheesh yeah they're already on us so can we just talk about that diablo cop for a second like blue and gold sirens and like a, excuse me blue and yellow sirens and a gold it's just like they're so sweet don't even get me started in the music and how it was like one of the first recent games that had like interactive music where you like crash and like the music changes or like you get to a certain spot of the game and it changes again i'm gonna stop fanboying and just put this down and just take a minute to calm down calm down matt it's okay you can be excited just be objective this is a review of the steam deck not uh share your life with the audience <laughs> Ah, all right. So, I mentioned this before, so I will go back to this. It's Circuit Superstars. So, when I got on a PC, I played the hell out of it. I got a laptop, played the hell out of it. Um, and then, like, I was patiently waiting for the day it would be released for Nintendo Switch. And it kept on being pushed back. And it kept on being pushed back. And it'll, it'll come next up. It'll come next update. And this is not at all me trying to attack original Fire games. I understand development is difficult. I understand that stuff happens with like the Switch version just not working. Um... So eventually, I, I'm like, I really want to play this game on a handheld. And then the Steam Deck came into view. I'm like, and then I saw the developers talk about getting it optimized and verified for Steam Deck. I'm like, okay, this is definitely something that can be done. So, Circuit Superstars on a handheld device. How well is it? Taking a look at the, you know, the options here, as well as you can tell, I mean the reflection. Um... We've got everything on high. The highest graphical settings we possibly can get out of this video game. We're off and running on this glorious racetrack. I have had many, 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 many great races on this track. Loved it to absolute bits. A uh, lot of great races in the GP Formula car here. Uh, but more importantly, objectively speaking, here we are playing Circuit Superstars at a solid, non-dropping 60 frames a second. So, kudos on you guys at Original Fire Games. You created a hell of a game so well optimized that on highest graphics, even when you're spinning out, just losing your mind, like... It's still at a solid 60 frames a second. Um, that being said, though, this is actually kind of interesting to look at here. Uh, CPU usage normally has been higher than GPU in a lot of instances. It is significantly lower. We're at like 28% to 35% CPU usage, and we're at like 
84, 85% of the CPU. And again, has not dropped below 60 since I've started this absolute mess of a race. So I am original fire games, huge props, huge kudos. Uh, of course, this isn't like the most graphically intensive game. It still looks really damn good though. Um, so for such a small development team, you guys have done leaps and bounds in my opinion like you've created a mostly bug free like very i don't think i've ever really encountered much of any bugs but to then finally be able to play this on a handheld device is just super gratifying and super awesome so yeah it's just it's such a good game and it's super nice to finally be able to play it uh, on a handheld device. Again, once again, it's much like Formula One and like a set of Quartza, where it's, yes, you can't play it on a handheld device, but like you need to be in the zone. You need to be like in it because it's definitely not the same experience that you're going to get when you're playing on like a laptop or something where it's like, I don't know, you got to like have your face right in the, the Steam Deck to, to really like get focused or whatever you guys will understand if you know if you've played certain games on like the switch that or normally meant for pc or whatever it's just it's a different experience it's still a great time but you're not going to be setting lap records that's for absolute sure so that's a lot of games but i'm not quite done i got one last one that i wanted to just run by you guys uh, and that's Forza Horizon 5. And we'll get into it after updates, so this could be a moment. Alright, so of course it's Forza Horizon 5. Uh, once again, we are on not medium, not low, but very low. Uh, and of course this is the Hot Wheels expansion, so let us go on our way. For some high-speed fun, I'm actually quite interested in this part uh, because previously, when I've been on even on low settings, where there would be some massive frame drops, but on very low, I am incredibly surprised to see how well it's been uh, maintaining frame rate for so long here. Uh, you know, it looked like just for a moment there we were down to like 46 as like just a lag spike. But I mean, we've been holding, you know, high 50s into the you know, 60. So, uh, of course, uh, CPU usage is about 67%, and uh, GPU usage is about 69, uh, 87. It looks, yeah, it's just kind of anywhere in between there, to be quite honest. So, that being said, this game is more than. Uh, functional, which I was surprised to see because, again, previously, uh, based off my previous experiences, when I wasn't trying to do benchmarking, I was just trying to play it before, you're on low to medium settings. Have fun trying to get 30 frames out of this. So the fact that this game is so well optimized, actually enough, that you're able to hold a steady 60 frames with an occasional like spike every now and again on the Steam Deck is awesome. So uh, I could go more into the weird stuff that people have done with this, where I actually was trying to install a Windows operating system where I would be able to do like a dual boot where I'd be able to run, you know, the Steam OS and, and the SD card and then Windows and the solid state driver. I think it was the reverse of that. Um, and I was actually trying to get Forza Motorsport 7 installed, but that was just... Uh, that didn't work out too well. The the map literally disappeared from underneath my car's tires. Uh, so I think I'm just going to wait until the reboot Forza Motorsport that will be most likely released through Steam. That I'll just download the game through Steam so you don't have to play, download or whip up a whole new operating system to play a single game. So yeah, like I was saying, more than impressed with how the Hot Wheels expansion of Forza Horizon 5 is running right now considering you know how resource intensive Forza has been in the past with uh, 
you know just making the game look great and the coolest thing too is like the game even looks great as is like even th this is quote unquote very low settings hell it doesn't sure seem like it it seems like easily medium if you, you weren't looking that hard at it so there you have it uh, a large variety of games from recently released to pc and steam to games that have been out a while, to games that have been out on different consoles entirely, all being run on the Steam Deck. Of course, I did want to make sure um, that you guys knew you know, precisely what was going on. Like I said before, this is the 64 gigabyte version that I personally have upgraded the SSD to a terabyte SSD. I forgot to make mention too that the Steam Deck actually down here, if you guys can tell, it's got a little, little SD card slot specifically a micro SD card slot and I was able to get an additional terabyte storage into that guy as well there are some people that I've gotten two terabyte SSDs in this guy so I have a total of three terabytes um, so long story short if you guys are interested in purchasing a Steam Deck I think they are actually readily shipping finally which is awesome to see so everybody who's ever wanted them or are starting to actually get them whatnot so I'm, I'm quite honestly happy to see that um Personal preference, there isn't, like, from what I can tell, there isn't any big performance increases that you're going to get with, like, the, what is that, the 256 gigabyte version or the 512. The 512 is, like, $630, which I use the same money to put in an SSD and an SD card. And, you know, the difference was that. So it's like, and I've got, what? quadruple the storage two terabytes versus 512 or something no in my honest opinion the steam deck for me has been a huge game changer it's opened my eyes to a lot of different things about you know playing games that i never thought i would be able to play on a handheld console but to actually get my hands on a steam console it is amazing because my entire steam library is here i mean I can download some games from my Steam library, uh, just not all of them at the same time, but being, being able to play most of them is awesome. So if you're interested in a Steam Deck, save up the money, pick one up. It is awesome. I really can't describe that. I can't say that enough. So please absolutely look into these guys. They're a lot of fun. Uh the, the controls feel great. I didn't even get to the buttons on the back of the console where you can map it to all sorts of different functions. Um, being able to like go use this little home button to get out of games. And then you've got this other little options thing to like be able to adjust the brightness and turn on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And hell, I've used my AirPods like numerous times and it works great. So no, at the end of the day, this is a fantastic console. It's got a lot of cool features, a lot of cool things that I've still yet to discover. And uh, I'm glad I was able to acquire a Steam Deck. And honestly, I'm very, very happy that I was able to share my thoughts with you guys. And hopefully I can convey my messaging that it's it's not perfect. Um, but mainly it's on like the game side. The game developers need to like optimize their games better. And EA, you need to get rid of that stupid launcher for God's sakes. Oh, God. Every time they update it, we've got to find a new fix for the damn thing. So, ugh. So regardless, you know, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. Of course, you know, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me all sorts of opinions in the in the comment section. Tell me about various nostalgic games that you have been playing on emulators recently or would love to play on a Steam Deck. Tell me what games that you'd want to see on a Steam Deck. Tell me what games that you're happy that i uh, showed off or just absolutely anything that's on your mind or just just want to say hi i don't care hi <laughs> how are you guys doing <laughs> so again thanks so much for watching i hope you guys have a fantastic day take care bye